Stay tuned for additional shows and guest speakers. Tell me who you'd like to hear from in the comments below. And remember, life is precious, live balanced. Today on Jackie Live, we have Maria Dummermuth. I had the pleasure of meeting her um, just through heat yoga um, in town and country shopping area. And she was one of the instructors for yoga at the Shiro Experience 2015. Um, she has many talents. She's incredible to be around. And uh, a couple weeks ago, she also... Um, do you say gave or did or or treated me with a bowls experience, a singing bowls? You know, like with with a massage, you say I got a massage. Right. Well, how do you describe the bowls session? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> I think received. You know, I feel like it's a gift, right? So, um, because it's such a different experience. Mm -hmm. So then, what other? accolades, talents, what have you done uh, over the lifetime that you think aligns with health and wellness and uh, other events or things that you have participated in that are near and dear for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, I've been teaching Pilates and yoga for quite some time now. Group fitness was where I started, and I would have to say I've evolved into more mind body health aspects mm -hmm. and uh that has just truly been my passion to work with people to see people um change and literally evolve through moving their body mm -hmm. and when you say with the group fitness is that mm -hmm. something you've done um you've done that at a couple places or mm -hmm. yeah i used to teach at um aspen i'm no longer there, I've decided to focus on teaching yoga and Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, so I teach uh, yoga at Heat Yoga, which I absolutely love, and a little bit of Pilates there as well. And I also teach uh, yoga and Pilates at Metamorphosis mm -hmm. Pilates, which is now downtown. That is incredible. I know that um, when I first found yoga... You know, you're doing it in your living room and you you are trying, you know. I When I tr started, I tried very hard and I was trying to do the poses. And the more you kind of are in an environment with other people doing yoga, you start mm -hmm. to learn that it's not just maybe trying to get a certain pose while you're in your living room and you say, oh my goodness, I did this pose. But it's more of the introspective path that you go on mentally with yoga. Is that something that you agree with or what do you, how do you feel about the, the physical, mental, spiritual of yoga? Oh yeah. Um, I totally agree. When I first started doing Pilates, I think I really connected with that because it was a lot about physical alignment, anatomy, um, what made sense, the medical, the, you know, how things work, the mechanics. And as I, I've always wanted to be teaching yoga and the more I've um, en engulfed or grown in my training, it's exactly, it's exactly that. It's not necessarily about the exterior. It's more about the internal um, because I think our ultimate goal is eventually finding out who you truly are on the inside, and then that will relate to and evolve how you are on the outside as well. Oh, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's finding that balance or who you are, and then your body follows, mm -hmm. and then you settle into your physical body because you've You've gone through everything to learn who you are. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. That is pretty powerful, though. You know, a lot of people um, aren't familiar with Pilates versus yoga, um, the differences, the similarities, you know, and kind of what the end result or the goal might be. You know, um, I know I started out doing it for stress relief. 
And because, you know, you read and you see someone doing yoga and they look so relaxed and they look like they're just not a care in the world, you know, really in tune with things. And I think that's what drew me to yoga first because I just was wondering, like, how do I get there? What is this? And it does change from a physical to a mental um, release. You know, it, it, it can go back and forth. Um, with Pilates and yoga, can you kind of go over some of the differences or uh, where they are similar? Yeah, I think um, I think fundamentally moving the body and finding a connection and awareness of yourself is the biggest commonality I see between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, in in Pilates, you're always I like to say you're looking for neutral, um, always trying to find where maybe muscles are off balance or. Um, you know, strengths are off balance, weaknesses, and and you kind of find that balance in your middle. But you're also taking that time to focus on how your breath connects with that and how your body connects with that. And Mm -hmm. I think in in yoga, we're always trying to find that sense of balance too, whether it's between um, life and recreation or work and play. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot about finding balance. Um, In yoga and Pilates, you're both working postures or movement of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's the the path you go down that's slightly a little bit different as to how you would follow each workout. Right. With Pilates, sometimes they have equipment involved. Mm-hmm. And is that for a strength purpose or is that for stabilizing? Is that for um, what, what role? Because I see some Pilates classes with and without. Yeah, Pilates, um, originally, uh, Joseph Pilates was a um, very weak as a child, and he ended up, um, he was sickly, so he ended up pursuing a lot of, it's kind of an interesting story, you know, he was a gymnast, and uh, then a circus performer, <laughs> and then in World War One, you know, he was working as a, um, a nurse in wow. one of the... Um, in one of the medical camps, and what he had done is he had actually taken the medical beds apart mm-hmm. and used the springs to make resistance to help the soldiers oh. and, um, you know, rehabilitate. Right. So that's where the equipment originates from. Right. And not a lot of people know that. And I always, you know, kind of giggle and people look at the equipment. It kind of looks archaic. <laughs> right. And, but... The cool thing is about the Pilates equipment, it shows exactly how your body lines up in space because Mm -hmm. you have that visual connection. And a lot of people that are not aware of their bodies, it's it's great because they can see, oh, there's the center. There's the center of my body. And when people do have injuries or imbalances, um, you know, like, for example, um, plantar fasciitis, I see all Mm -hmm. the time. Mm And simple things such as, oh, you know, your ankle is not straight or you can see where someone's rolling out on their foot or they're bending their knee just because the equipment is so structural. Wow. And then you're working around that against resistance to possibly get your body back to neutral. Right. That makes complete sense because you see someone like someone that has a um, like a gate where they walk. Uh, and they kind of sway to one side or one um, – they carry things on a side maybe or maybe it's something where they have kids that they carry, you know, and it is so easy to fall in that pattern. And then before you know it, you don't realize that you're not even aligned. Um, is that something that you see different with just stretching muscles versus – having an active stretch, like with resistance, Mm -hmm. um, with Pilates. So that's different than, um, doing a regular stretch. Yeah. It gives you, um, maybe direction or, um, like connection. I think it's just one more piece Mm -hmm. and helping you connect with your body. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. So where is the stretch? You know, sometimes people will just go into a stretch and they're stretching to stretch, you know, they're th- you know, but they're not necessarily thinking about it. So then it comes back to that connection 
of how can I connect with that portion of my body and be in my body. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. I know when I was running track in middle school um, a long, long time ago, and I would become injured or I would feel that when I stretch, I couldn't quite have that strength. And years later, I find out it's because it probably should have been doing like a resistance stretching to keep the muscles tight and to keep them warmed up versus loose and not wanting to perform the same. Um, And I think that the resistance with the Pilates seems more active in a way. I know when I have done yoga classes and it's definitely a workout, but the resistance portion of Pilates seems very interesting. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I think what people also don't realize, and we do talk about this in yoga too, because it's, you know, about about energetic movement um, Mm -hmm. versus just passive. Right. And I think that's with anything, whether it's yoga or Pilates. Um, But a lot of injuries will happen in yoga, Pilates, or stretching because people just hang in those stretches. And what we tend to forget about are, um, you know, our connective muscle fibers, you Mm -hmm. know, our, our ligaments, our tendons. And, you know, what you're saying with resistance um, absolutely. Uh, when you're working a muscle actively, you can stretch it equally throughout the entire muscle too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That it just sounds wonderful. Mm-hmm. Once you become to love stretching, it's just so relaxing, and I think that's another reason why yoga was always so um, interesting to me because you you can never. Stop. I mean, you can go and go and go and continue to feel better. And there's no cap on kind of the pleasure you get from it. So there's always something to learn. And you think you resolve one thing mentally. And then you go to a yoga class and you haven't. And, you know, a lot of great instructors uh, in this community to kind of help people through those different journeys. Um, I went to one of your, uh, singing bowl yoga classes. Uh, when was that? That was a month or so. Was that two months ago? I think it was in December. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not that long ago. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that? I know I, I learned about it from a friend and I went and I don't even think I properly read up on it but I know it was very enjoyable Mm -hmm. it was incredibly magical because it was a Friday evening you know the lights were dim Um, can you go over the significance of that class and what the different um, purposes and intentions were yeah um, what I taught was um, what I would consider a lunar based class which meant it was more of an internal practice um a lot of yoga that you will see right now, and there's so many different styles mm-hmm. of yoga. Right. You know, you'll see power yoga, um, you know, yoga sculpt. There's just, there's all, there's many, many different branches <laughs> yeah. and flavors to choose from. So I just had another instructor to me say the other day, um, if you, you know, when she has students come up to her, she always says to them, if you don't like my style of yoga, please go try someone else's because... Oh. If you don't connect with one thing, right? There's always something. Sure. Um, but going back to the class that that I taught, it was a, a lunar based class designed to draw yourself inward and maybe take your attention into a more relaxed state. Mm-hmm. And we did poses that were lower to the earth um, instead mm-hmm. of doing what would be a traditional. Um, sun salutation called Surya Namaskar, we did moon salutations. Right. So they would be more cooling, um, more relaxing, more restorative. And um, we did a class that was, uh, I don't know, generally it was like an hour long of slower moving postures. And then at the end, um, I got out the uh, Tibetan singing bowls and Mm -hmm. I played the singing bowls, which have a wonderful earthy vibrational tone and 
in hopes to help people maybe just alleviate the idea of sitting in meditation, because that can be real tough for a lot of people just right out of the gate, Um, but playing the bowls and bringing vibration into your shavasana just to really help you relax. Mm -hmm. And were we sitting up or laying down for that? Laying down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, I think we sat up and meditated for a moment, maybe? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then was this in December for a reason? Um, I did do it, um, let's see, it was right before the full moon. We couldn't go exactly on the full moon just because of, you know, scheduling how that Mm -hmm. works. Um, Because our body does align with the cycles of the earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, generally on a full moon is a wonderful time to be regenerative regenerative in your yoga practice. So That is incredible. I know that, I mean, it was packed in there. People wanted to come in there. Mm -hmm. Um, It was just incredible. It was very introspective in the sense that even though there were plenty of people in there, it was, like you said, very... um, I don't want to say very slow, but it it was almost like you were the only one in the room. You know, I felt just like I was there alone and it was a one-on-one session and um, I felt great. Um, and just kind of like you said in the evening with the full moon coming, it was a different kind of energy than when you would – work out or do a strong, like a faster movement um, yoga class or something where you're like, I feel re-energized. This was like, I feel like I just hibernated for six months and now I feel fresh again, you know? And that was, that is definitely something I was so glad that we got to go to. Rob was there and he, you know, sometimes yoga can be, very new moves, very trying in in a in a move that you're not quite there yet. And it was fun to see some people kind of just go, I'm not there, you know, and some people were incredibly familiar with all the moves, but everyone was in their own comfort zone. They went to where they wanted to go and uh very relaxed, but still having the energy to do it. It was it was really nice. I think that the the purpose of the day <laughs> was uh was accomplished. Um and so with the singing bowl, so you have different sizes. Did you say mm-hmm. these are all from overseas? Explain a little more about the bowls. Yeah. Um well, let's see. As as my teacher has taught me, um it, it's interesting. I call them Tibetan singing bowls. And in his book, it's also labeled that they're Tibetan singing bowls, but they really come from the Himalayan mountains. Oh, sure. And um, I can't recall how he described it, how the Americans would just traditionally call them Tibetan. So he just he just lets it go as that. <laughs> yeah. And um, But they are. The bowls that I have are handmade in the Himalayan mountains. Um not too far from Kathmandu. I mean, it could come from anywhere in Nepal. Um, Mm -hmm. And I purchased them from my teacher who brings them in, and uh, they're all handmade. Mm -hmm. And the bowls come in various sizes. Some are, I mean, my biggest bowl is probably 14 inches, but they can come as large as, I would say, gosh, 20. Wow. There can be huge, big bowls. And... um, the singing bowls are handmade mm-hmm. still, um, over a fire, pounded um, with mallets um, to chanting. And they're just, they have a beautiful quality to them. No two bowls will sound exactly the same. Wow. They have different pitch, different frequency. And playing them, it's a very energetic experience because each bowl may or may not resonate with a certain person Mm -hmm. because we all have certain frequencies and tones that we relate to in our lives. And I think that's the, um, the beauty of the singing bowls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so are they all, is the height of the bowl proportionate to the, the width 
is that part of the equation? Is that just how they they end up being made? Are they the same? Are they different? And I would have to say all the bowls are different too because they're <laughs> handmade. Right. Um, they're handmade because they're handmade. And yeah. some of the, I have one antique bowl that is just, it's so beautiful. It's, it's very tiny and it looks a little bit more proportionate, but it just looks just black and it's not a beautiful bowl, but it's beautiful in the way it sounds. Right. And each bowl, some will even have, you know, wider rims on one mm. side, skinnier rim on the other side because they are handmade. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when you played uh, at the moon, at the lunar class, mm-hmm. was this something where you had multiple? I th- I think I remember seeing about three or did you have more? Mm-hmm. And kind of alluding on the purposes of bigger, smaller, is there any any information behind that, a personal preference? Sure. Um, what I brought with me for that particular um, class was my seven larger bowls, which would match up with the seven chakras. Oh. So, um, and there's a multitude of ways you can play. You might go to a concert of a singing bowl a musician, and they just might have, you know, 20, 30 bowls and, and, and tuning forks and crystal bowls. And because it all comes down to personal preference. Wow. Um, but what I have learned from my teacher is different uh, protocols playing the bowls, which would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm-hmm. And um, those were the larger seven bowls that I had. And when you play the bowls in different sequences, playing a different note, um, it lines up with that chakra. And just different sequences will uh, help to balance out the chakras. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. So, and is that the intention of every time you play bowls? Or are there different purposes for these? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, you know, you can use it simply as a meditation tool to Mm -hmm. clear your mind. I know a lot of people and many yoga instructors and meditation instructors will just play the bowl by rubbing around the edge and Mm -hmm. it helps to allow the mind to quiet um, when you focus on it. Right. And, um, but, you know, my intention and and what I have been working on is whether it's with a group or with individuals is trying to help bring balance. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in a group, it's interesting as I play the bowls, Sometimes you can even hear it within a session. They may start out sounding very out of tune. Mm -hmm. And thinking of, you know, 30-some people in Shavasana, you know that there's a lot of people there that are thinking. Sure, right. And it's hard to turn off thought. And as you continue to play, the bowls, the sound gets softer and maybe more in tune. Mm -hmm. And you can sense that even though I'm not specifically playing a tune that we would sing to or we would know that, you know, it's my hopes that people's minds are starting to still, which allows them to fully relax right, and fully release themselves from thought and um, into relaxation. Right. And you know, I love to go without, (laughs) I'm a big fan and supporter of, relaxation is different than sleep. It's different than watching TV. It's different than anything else. So taking some deep breaths, just completely relaxing is very powerful. Not only just mentally to get a break, but physically. Um, It's just amazing for people to experience. When I was at... uh, your place having the bowls played around me and on me. Um, So you had put some warm water in the bowl and had placed that. I remember on the, so I was face down. So my, the bottoms of my feet were up. So I think they were on the bottom of my feet for a moment, but they were definitely on the back of my knees, 
the small of my back and between my shoulders. Is that correct? It's such a relaxing experience that the, some of the small details kind of slip away because it's just so incredible. Um, and then there was one near the top of my head, but on a table, so not balancing on my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are other small bowls around that. Is that kind of what it was? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so taking it, you know, at a deeper level, you know, in a class we have relaxation or using it for meditation. I also, like you said, I, I play the bowls um, in private sessions and it's not a massage. It's, no. it's um, a singing bowl session is having vibration um, played around you or mm-hmm. on you to really, if you were to look at the science of, of vibration and when there's imbalance in our body, the cells being out of balance. Right. And thinking mm-hmm. it, of it simply as when there's bringing vibration and helping bring that vibration back to the cells so the cells have an even vibration. Right. It just really can help to alleviate what's um, bothering you or paining you in your body or mm-hmm. your mind. So um, when I play the bowls on someone, having the water in the bowls is actually very interesting because when someone maybe is out of balance, mm-hmm. you can see the water doesn't, um, it maybe doesn't even move. Right. And then when you play the bowls and you can feel the vibration and the, and the person fully relax, mm-hmm. the water makes like a honeycomb pattern. Wow. And you can see that that area of the body is relaxing. That is incredible. Mm-hmm. I remember, I think initially when I got to your house, I was saying, this day is interesting. <laughs> this day is going. It's going. I'm going to make it through, but it's interesting. And oh my goodness. I remember when the session was finished and you bring me the glass of water. And it is, it's it's kind of like the residual vibration is still kind of there even though the room is quiet at that point so you're just kind of going oh wow I was just experiencing something amazing and it it is something that I could see becoming quite addicted to (laughs) when oh I need to do this it just I like the fact that the warm bowl I love anything that's warm also you know, water, warm, it's just so soothing, especially right now. And um, it was very relaxing. I I kind of thought, thought about it like um, someone you really, really love and you haven't seen them forever or you're really excited to see them and you hold hands or you hug and that kind of vibrational... Yeah, and clearly it's because the both of you have a reciprocating energy towards each other that you're you're buzzing. And I thought it was similar to that, but on a different wavelength. So it was it definitely opened up areas where it's like, oh, this is so soothing. It's so um it's very unique, very unique. And you always think about vibration. You know, if you watch something on TV or see a video in science class or something back in the day where they show vibrations coming off of a microwave or vibration coming off of a sound speaker, when they have those circle lines, you know, this is what a vibration looks like. Or kind of like when you see a drop of water, it's kind of like what a vibration would look like. And that is similar to what I was thinking, experiencing visualizing in my head when I had all of these different bowls going at the same time. So I was just kind of picturing it just kind of wave after wave of sound, vibration, just bringing things back into balance. And it was it was great. I mean, I, I left that day and um, just relaxed. You know, it's kind of like it does give you a fresh start also. Um because if you have things on your mind and you're churning on something that's upsetting you, 
and you think about it once, shame on me, think about it twice. You know, it's kind of like creating the negative vibration in your own body. And then I was perpetuating it that day. You know, that was my doing. And then I come to your place and then you rebalanced it. So that was great. I appreciate it. Um, so is this something that you you learned from your teacher um, that wasn't locally, correct? You traveled for that. Right. Um, my teacher's name is uh, Sarin Sharesta. Mm-hmm. And um, he's originally from Nepal, but lives in Boulder, Colorado right now. And he teaches all over the the world, mm-hmm. which, you know, fascinates me. And, and a lot of who he's working with right now are doctors, mm-hmm. which is even more awesome um, because I think the medical world is really, and, and we see this here too, um, everywhere, is really incorporating a lot of Eastern practices right. into um, any health aspect mm-hmm. as far as for allowing patients to be relieved from stress right. and pain. and um, But no, I learned in Boulder and I've gone back, let's see, I've gone back a second time to see him and learn a little bit more and I will also go back again this spring <laughs> to do another training with him. And every time I go, I just learn a lot from him. He grew up in a small village and he grew up with shamans around him, a very different spiritual life than I've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. And just a very giving and soft hearted person. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I would think after being around bulls for as long as he probably has, <laughs> he, he has it figured out and he's, he is getting that you know, renewal all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, that might be something we would have to talk about for Shiro. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Aha. <laughs> well, um, you know, it has been an incredible time this morning learning more about you, learning about what you do and your expertise. Um, where's a couple of places we could find information on services you do? And, you know, do you, do you have a, an area to look for that you are at regularly? Absolutely. Um, Right now I am teaching classes at Heat Yoga. So um, heatyogacr.com. You can check out our schedule there. I teach uh, Pilates there, um, yoga, and I am also teaching at Metamorphosis Pilates. And I teach yoga and Pilates there, do some private work there as well. And if you're interested in the singing bowls or any of my classes, I also contract out um, teaching at private locations too. My personal website is mariadummermuth.com. That is, and could you just spell your last name? Yeah, it is a tough (laughs) one, isn't it? Uh, (laughs) It's D U M M. E R M U T H. You know, and and I say that too because I believe I have misspelled it on occasion. <laughs> I know, just a little bit. You won't be the first or the last. Um, and then just I wanted to pull up here real quick the Metamorphosis website so we can get that one out here too. Um, it is Metamorphosis dash dash. Yeah, I looked that Pilates. up. dot mm-hmm. Um, that's perfect. I appreciate it. You have been wonderful to talk to and to get to know over this last year. I can't believe it's only been, you know, it seems like I have known you forever, but it is just wonderful. Um, and I appreciate everything that you have done for Shiro and the community. Uh, well, I will leave you with this today. And if you have any questions for Maria, feel free to post them on the link for the um, YouTube iTunes page. And we will see you next time, guys. Thank you again, Maria. Thank you. Thank have you a wonderful me. day. Of course. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for tuning in to Jackie Live. And we will hear you next time while we talk about some music tips and some 
uh, new talks here in Cedar Rapids. Stay tuned for additional shows and guest speakers. Tell me who you'd like to hear from in the comments below. And remember, life is precious. Live balanced.